we stand so we can begin our celebration. I'm not a singer, but if somebody can sing, go for it. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be always with you. Amen. Good morning, brothers and sisters. I'm very happy to celebrate our last Easter day because tomorrow we celebrate Pentecost. We start this evening and we close the Easter season. It's been a beautiful journey as we have extended our Sunday, Easter Sunday, for seven weeks to cross roads with the Lord, to experience the Lord in our lives, in our hearts, to raise our hope in this broken world where there's anxiety, where there's a sense of no direction. In this world that is recovering from this long pandemia, and we, the church, the easterly people, shining bright, raising hope, giving support, nourishing our brothers and sisters in faith through our witness, our charity, and our love. Let us come together as we come to a close in this Easter season in thanking the Lord for the many gifts that we have received, starting from Advent to today, acknowledging God's grace and mercy. And let us pray that we may be transformed to his love and mercy. Lord, had mercy. Christ, had mercy. Lord, had mercy. And may Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and take us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we who have celebrated the Paschal festivities may by your gifts hold fast to them in the way that we may live lives of renewal. We ask this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When he entered Rome, Paul was allowed to live by himself with the soldier who was guarding him. Three days later, he called together the leaders of the Jews. When they had gathered, he said to them, My brothers, although I had done nothing against our people or our ancestral customs, I was handed over to the Romans as a prisoner from Jerusalem. After trying my case, the Romans wanted to release me because they found nothing against me deserving the death penalty. But when the Jews objected, I was obliged to appeal to Caesar, even though I had no accusation to make against my own nation. This is the reason, then, I have requested to see you and to speak with you, for it is on account of the hope of Israel that I wear these chains. He remained for two full years in his lodgings. He received all who came to him, and with complete assurance and without hindrance, he proclaimed the kingdom of God and taught about the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yes. 
The just will gaze on your face, O Lord. The just will gaze on your face, O Lord. The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold, his searching glance is on mankind. The just will gaze on your face, O Lord. The Lord searches the just and the wicked. The lover of violence he hates. For the Lord is just. He loves just deeds. The upright shall see his face. Just. Alleluia, alleluia. I will send to you the spirit of truth, says the Lord, and he will guide you to all the truth. Alleluia. May the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Peter turned and saw the disciple following whom Jesus loved. The one who had also reclined upon his chest during the supper and had said, Master, who is the one who will betray you? When Peter saw him, he said to Jesus, Lord, what about him? Jesus said to him, What if I want him to remain until I come? What concern is it of yours? You follow me. So the word is spread among the brothers that the that disciple will not die. But Jesus had not told him that he would not die. Just, what if I want him to remain until I come? What concern is it of yours? It is this disciple who testify to these things and has written them, and we know that his testimony is truth. There are also many other things that Jesus did, but if these things were described individually, I do not think that the whole world will contain the books that would be written. Brothers and sisters, the gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. I so love John as he's so original. <laughs> when you see the gospel of Mark, Matthew, and Luke, they're kind of similar. Luke has also his own content. We know that Luke was a medical doctor and he was well versed in study academically. So he did his own research and went to Palestine to interview people and gather more data than the one he had from Mark. Mark never met Jesus personally. Mark was the secretary of Paul. Probably some of his letters were written by Mark. In the old times, you could have someone to write as you would walk and kind of speak, 
and your secretary would write. Later, Mark met with Peter and he learned more about the Lord Jesus from Peter. So Mark gives us a perspective of Paul and Peter. And I could say that to a certain point, Mark met Jesus in a very spiritual way. Probably was not one of the apostles, but just as Paul encountered Jesus in a very special way, that after being the secretary of two very important apostles, he was able to write his gospel to preach and instruct his community. Because something that we need to always have in mind and heart is that when we read the gospel, we have to have three communities before us. The community of disciples and the people who follow Jesus. We need to think of the community of the gospel writer who the gospel writer is writing to and instructing them in faith. And we also have to think of us hearing the gospel today in the 21st century. So every gospel has three communities. The community of disciples, the community of the gospel, and us. Luke was also secretary of Paul. And Luke came to know Jesus to the preaching of Paul. Later, when Paul was arrested, he left to Palestine and was very eager to learn about Jesus and to learn about the facts that lead him to his faith. Something that is so gracious and so wonderful in his gospel, among other things, that's, that he, as he goes to the genealogy of Jesus, being a medical doctor, he thinks of Jesus as a son of Mary by bloodline. Yes, in Palestine, the, the sons, the children, would inherit the name of the father, the head of the household. And you could adopt children, and they would be your children because the, the head of the household was the one who gave his name to his family. And that's what appears in Matthew's gospel. Matthew brings Jesus as a descendant of David through the bloodline of Joseph. But look, as a good medical doctor, says, let's see where the blood of, where the bloodline of Mary comes. So as we read all those names in the Gospel of Luke, we follow the bloodline of Mary. And Mary crosses also the bloodline of David. So when we see that Jesus is descendant of David, he is reaffirmed in two ways. From Matthew's perspective, he receives the title of the son of David through Joseph, and he receives it through the bloodline of Mary, his mother. What a gracious thing of God to bring two people and connect them at the same point. John also arranges his, his gospel in a very catechetical way. The first part of the book, everything around seven main miracles that we call the book of signs. And the second half of the gospel that narrates for us the passion, death, and resurrection of our Lord. The way where this information is arranged is not what matters. What matters is the teachings, and we hear it today on today's gospel, on the last verses of John's gospel. There are many things that Jesus did, but if these were to be described individually, 
with full detail the author of the gospel says there would be no place to put all these writings. That in a formally way is to say the Lord did so many things and instructed us with so many wise messages that are not placed on this book but he's telling and affirming his community, but wait. All these things are very important, but we have gathered this on this book that you may believe and have life in his name. Because at the end, that's the final point of John. This is what you need to know as your basic catechism. And these basic fundamental points will lead you to fulfillment of faith. Something that is also important to add as a scriptural knowledge, what we read today and yesterday, it's called the epilogue of John. Because before yesterday's reading and today, John had already concluded the gospel after Jesus appears to the disciples, blows the Holy Spirit to them, and grants them the authority to forgive sins, the authority to tie on earth and tie on heaven, to untie on earth and to untie on heaven. In the same last words that I just read to you, I repeat it. The Lord did many things. But what we have placed on this book are there that you may believe and have life in his name. As we continue reading from yesterday, we see a concern from Peter. Peter already spoke to Jesus, and Jesus wanted to reaffirm how much love he has for them. The thing is that in English, love is love, and we don't have any distinction from love. A father and son, a father loves his son, and a son loves his father. A friend loves his friend. A sister loves his brother. We are called to love one another in the church. But in the Greek, there are distinctions of the kind of love that's being placed here. In Greek, we have philos. The love that you have for a friend. Estorge. The love that you have for a family member. Immediate family. Your son, your daughter, your sister, your father, your grandfather. So you have, have a son and a daughter. He said, I estorge you. If I have a good friend, I say, I feel you. Another love that couples have in marriage is eros. And the love that God has for us is agape. So when John says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that we may have life in his name. The word that John uses in the gospel is God agape the world. Agape. That we hear it well described in the first letter of Corinthians chapter 13 in that beautiful hymn of love that sometimes we use it in marriages. Love is patient. Love is kind. Well, the word that is being used here, it's agape. Highest level of love. And that's a love that the church is called. In the Last Supper, when Jesus says, love one another, as I love you, 
he's saying, agape one another as I agape you. He doesn't say, philos one another. He doesn't say, estorge one another. Agape is the maximum expression. And agape is what we call in the sacrament of matrimony when two people come together and become one flesh. When Jesus asked Peter, Peter, do you agape me? Peter answers, yes, Lord, I feel you. No, 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 no. Let's go back and, and rewind this. I don't want to have a relationship with you in philos. I don't want to be your friend. Yes, your friend. Peter, do you agape me? And philos for us. And a second time, Peter answers, yes, Lord, I feel you, you. I can just imagine the look of our Lord like, really? You feel of me? Really? That's the kind of relationship you want to have with me in the church? Not good enough. Philos is not a good enough word or feeling or relationship that we can have with the Lord and with one another. I can just imagine the look of Jesus in his eyes. In that little pause where Peter has to internalize and understand and embrace to the point that he will say, Lord, you know me. At the end, he says, he's saying, Lord, I'm just a mere human being. I'm finished, imperfect, with shortcomings, a sinner. I betrayed you. I'm nobody. I'm worth it. How can I agape you with this condition? When I feel so shame, when you have pulled me away from the community to reaffirm how much you love me and how much trust you can put at me when I betrayed you. Because at the end, that's the core of the conversation. That's the core. And under that understanding, he made that look of love of Jesus on Peter. Like, really? You feel your, me? Jesus is resurrected. He is going to be the rock in which the church will be built. Philos and Estorge is not enough to build a church. Not strong enough. In order to build a church in God's pride on earth, agape is the only foundation. And then Peter, as you heard yesterday, the gospel would say, Lord, you know me. You know that deeply in my loins, for my heart, I agape you. But I don't know if this person, this human person, it's good enough to carry out the mission that you want to entrust me. And Jesus will affirm that broken man and say, yes, you are, and you take care of my sheep. You take care of the church. Wow. That's our Peter. John was so perfect that having that as the rock of the church, nobody would, would ever overpass John. 
Having that, having John as that first pope would defeat the church because once John would die, that would be it. Who could be like John? John was so faithful and walked with the Lord and was there in the crucifixion with Mary and was there at the foot of the cross and was there to take him into the tomb and was there when he rose and he saw the signs and he believed. John was a very special, talented person. But nobody is like John. But many of us can be like Peter. Where we acknowledge our imperfections, our weakness. And we can tell the Lord, you know, Lord, probably right now I just feel of you. Probably this time, I just target you. I long to agape with you, and I can't because my human nature and frail humanity does not move me forward from philos and storge. Only your grace can lead me to agape. And any one of us in this congregation can say, Lord, give me your love and grace that I may agape you and agape my brothers and sisters. But at the end, if you really think about it, there's no need for more writing. As long as we understand that the Lord is asking us to follow him to focus on our own journey and disregard other things that are not relevant or not important. What is your journey in the Lord? What is your response unto that question, do you agape me? Are you going to say, I feel those, I storge? In honesty, I just don't feel anything. What is our response? And as we close this easterly season, the last encounter with the Lord in the Lake of Galilee, where the Lord wants to reestablish, reconnect us, reconcile us for any kind of loose strings that we left behind on Lent. Today is the day. Do you feel us? Do you storge? Or do you agape? Let us stand and pray together that God's grace and love may lead us to a full agape among us and with him. For our holy Catholic Church, May we remain in Christ and become fruitful branches of the true vine. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our national and local leaders, may God help them hear and respond to the cries of those most in need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the anxious and the sick, may God protect them and grant them full health of mind and body. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this community of faith, may God continue to draw us to himself and bring harmony and peace where there may be division. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear. For all who have died, may they come to experience the fullness of joy in the presence of the Lord for eternity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our And for the people of the parish, let us pray to the Lord. Loving Father, we thank you for your Son and that community of disciples that you left us as a foundation of our church to look upon and know that through their preaching instruction, we may believe in you, our Creator and Giver of life. We entrust his prayers that we have expressed and we also put in your loving heart those needs that we have, that we have not been able to put into words, and you know that we need. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed are you, God of all creation. To your goodness, we have this red to offer, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. Blessed have become for us our bread of life. Blessed are you, God of all creation. To your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. Blessed so you will become for us our spiritual drink. Receive, O oh Lord, this sacrifice, that he may be accepted of the you, Almighty Father. And purify my Lord for my sins and my wrongdoings, that I may celebrate these sacred mysteries with the gift your heart. Pray me, brothers and sisters, that their sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. For the praise and glory of God's name, for the good and the good of all the church. Amen. May the Holy Spirit coming near, we pray, O Lord, prepare our minds for divine sacrament, since the Spirit himself is the remission of all things, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may the Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord God. It is right and, it is right and just that we should give you praise and glory, Lord, Father of infinite goodness. For by your word of your, God, of your son's gospel, you have brought together one church from every people, tongue, and nation. And having filled her with the life of the power of your Holy Spirit, you never cease through her to gather the whole human race into one family. Manifesting the covenant of your love, your church dispenses without ceasing the blessed hope of your kingdom and shines bright as a sign of your faithfulness, which in Christ Jesus our Lord you promised would last until eternity. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, while with all the church, as one voice, we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed Lord, and to be glorified, you who loves the human race and who always walks with us in the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst, when we gather by his love and when, as one for his disciples, and so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread on this Paschal feast table. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask you to sanctify these gifts by the power of your Holy Spirit, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son. At the night that he gathered with his friends, those witness of faith, the ones they received the Holy Spirit, went into the world to proclaim the good news. As he was with them, he took bread and gave you thanks and praise, broke it and gave it to them and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body that will be given up for you. When the supper had ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise. Took the cup and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is a challenge of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Brothers and sisters, the mystery of our faith, save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Amen. Therefore, most holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led to his passion and dead on the cross to the glory of resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love and he comes again, and we offer you this better life and this challenge of eternal blessing. Look with favor on the blessing of your church in which we show for the paschal sacrifice that your son has handed over to us and grant us that by the unity of the Holy Spirit, we may always be counted among the members of your son until eternity. Father in heaven, we ask you to renew our church of St. Francis by the light of the gospel and strengthen bonds of unity between our faithful and our pastors, together with Francis, our Pope, Robert, John, and Ramon, our bishops, and the whole order of bishops. In a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity, love, and conquered. Father, we entrust in your loving heart our sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Son, and all the dead whose fate you have only known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in, the, and in your kingdom. And in the re resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Promise to all of us as your sons and daughters. And when our pilgrimage on earth has concluded, Call us to be with you in your heavenly home, together with Francis, our, together with the Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Apostles, the Martyrs, St. Francis of Assisi, and St. Clair, and all those saints which will praise you and glorify you to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Please stand, brothers and sisters. With the joy of the Holy Spirit and united in one faith, let's call upon our Father as we say, Our Father, who are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And leave us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, and protect us from all anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the coming our the glory are yours now and forever. May the peace of the Lord be with you. Let us give you a sign of eternal peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us. May your eyes be open on the breaking of the bread, like that, like with the disciples, that with new eyes we may see this world in our brothers and sisters with a heart full of agape. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we for being called to the supper of the Lamb. May the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ take us to our lasting life. Amen. Please join me in praying together the act of spiritual communion that we may come in communion with the brothers and sisters for live streaming. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul, since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally. Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never allow me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Hear in your compassion our prayers, O Lord, that as we have been brought from these things of the past to new mysteries, so that with former ways left behind, we may be made new in the holiness of mind. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And may the Lord be with you. Amen. And may the Lord bless you and keep you always, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace to serve the Lord and one another as you, Chris, has ended. Our brothers who are coming for baptism, just give us a few minutes to give communion, set up for you. We're very happy to have you over in Mass. God bless your hearts and your homes. And the church rejoices in bringing your children in communion to the church by baptism. Let us give these families a big applause as a welcoming sign. We love you and be a cheer of our prayers. <laughs>